This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, four people are dead and several others wounded after a series of shootings in southern Maine. Maine Department of Public Safety spokesperson Shannon Moss says four people were found dead inside a home on the Augusta Road in Bowdoin this morning. A short time later, three people were shot while driving their vehicle southbound near mile marker 17 and exit 15 in Yarmouth. The victims were all taken to a local hospital. One person is in critical condition. A person of interest has been detained and Moss says the shootings are connected, but there is no threat to the public at this time. Exit 15 southbound in Yarmouth is still closed at last notice while police continue to investigate the scene. Anyone who witnessed the incident or was involved in either location is asked to contact the Augusta Communications Center at 624-7076. A drug trafficking investigation led to a significant seizure in Callis. The Washington County Sheriff's Office responded to a criminal threatening complaint on April 16th that led them to believe a drug trafficking operation was being conducted from a residence on Lafayette Street. During a search, officers found fentanyl, more than 72 grams of methamphetamine, and more than 105 grams of suspected cocaine base, all with a street value of approximately $46,000. They also seized three firearms, $2,700 in suspected drug proceeds, and other evidence of drug trafficking. 32-year-old Stephen Perkins of Callis is charged with aggravated drug trafficking, possession of firearms by a prohibited person, and violation of bail. 25-year-old Capri Lambert of New York and 28-year-old Devin Madigan of Bangor are both charged with ag aggravated trafficking of scheduled drugs. Washington County Sheriff Barry Curtis says more charges are possible. Bangor police arrested a man after responding to a report of a family fight. According to police, Jason Reveal of Bangor was taken into custody on Tuesday morning after Bangor police were called to Center Street. A woman told police a man had physically assaulted her before she fled the residence. Detectives determined she did show signs of uh, being assaulted and she was transported to a local hospital for treatment. Reveal is being held at the Penobscot County Jail on a charge of domestic violence aggravated assault. The Maine Department of Environmental Protection has provided an update on cleanup efforts following a toxic train derailment in Somerset County over the weekend. The Canadian Pacific Freight Train derailed and it sent three railway workers to the hospital on Saturday. Seven train cars, including three locomotives and four lumber cars that sustained significant fire damage due to the accident are still present at the site. The hazardous materials being transported by the train were removed from the site over the weekend. However, the DEP says fuel, hydraulic fluid and engine oil from the still present derailed cars is saturating the soil and moving into the nearby Moose River, which does feed into Little Bursua Lake. Maine DEP is working with Canadian Pacific to remove the oil through the use of sorbent material. Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife Biologists are surveying the area today to study any potential impact to wildlife. The Joint Standing Committee on State and Local Government heard testimony today on a bill to expand TikTok restrictions on state devices here in Maine. AJ Douglas spoke to the representative who introduced that bill, who says the popular app poses a threat to confidential information. Representative Nathan Carlo has introduced legislation that would require the Commissioner of Administrative and Financial Services to adopt rules banning state executive and judicial employees from using TikTok on government devices. And this bill is important because as we've seen in recent reporting, TikTok has hidden and unknown capabilities to surveil individual people and to collect data and to transmit that data back to the Chinese government. Harlow explains that LD 1007, an act to ban the video hosting service TikTok on all state owned devices, is a necessary extension to the Governor Mills existing ban of the app, which is limited to the state executive branch. The difference between what the administration did and what this legislation is proposing is that my bill would make this law for all departments of state government. Due to the separation of powers, the governor cannot direct what the legislature tells its employees to do, nor can the governor direct what the judicial employees can do. Everyday users are asking, 
why lawmakers care. Some are still in the dark of past reports where users' data could allegedly be shared with Chinese authorities. If an individual wants to use this application, they should do so at their own risk. But this application has the hidden and unknown capability to take the data on that user's phone and to send that to the Chinese government. Carlos says there has not been any opposition towards the bill at this time. In Augusta, A.J. Douglas for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Back in February, legislation was introduced to a congressional committee by a representative from Arizona deemed the Rescue the Whales Act. That act helps to repeal language passed in an omnibus funding package that supporters say would significantly threaten the survival and recovery of the North Atlantic right whale. Tuesday, the largest in lobstering community testified on Capitol Hill about how the new legislation would unf unfairly target the main lobstering industry. The largest fixed gear fishery has also never been linked to a right whale death. Our last entanglement was in 2004, and that whale is alive today. If there are two numbers that you remember from my testimony today, remember zero and zero. There have been zero documented entanglements of a right whale in Maine lobster gear since 2004. And there have been zero documented mortalities associated with Maine lobster gear ever. There was more testimony from NOAA and the Woods Hole Oceanogra Oceanographic Institution that showed support for the changes to the legislation. They argued the numbers provided by the lobster industry do not account for Maine lobster gear that may have been involved in entanglements that were never found. Maine officials are spreading awareness about highway safety. Our David Ledford spoke with some of them about the importance of maintaining safe roadways. My co-workers and our highway crews have been struck injured and killed while working on our roadways. Once again, Maine transportation representatives and public officials came together in Gardner to talk about highway safety and the dangers of distracted driving as part of National Work Zone Awareness Week. As winter turns to spring, officials say Mainers will likely see an increase in road work across the state and with that change comes a higher risk of highway accidents. According to a survey conducted by the AAA Foundation for Traffic, 60% of road workers surveyed experienced a near miss while on the job. In addition to being dangerous, Maine State Police representatives say distracted driving can lead to serious consequences. If you are involved in a crash with someone and you were distracted, whether it was outside the car or inside the car, you can be summoned with a civil uh, VSAC, you know, a, a ticket. If the, someone in the car, the car was hurt because of your negligence, then, you know, you could be looking at a civil lawsuit as well. Officials say that every year, Maine averages more than 500 crashes and two fatalities in work zones. To raise awareness of the issue, members of the public are encouraged to wear orange on Wednesday, April 19th. Representatives for the Maine Turnpike Authority say traffic volumes on the turnpike have returned to pre-pandemic levels. Motorists are being asked to follow posted speed limits, eliminate distractions, and pay attention. Behind that concrete barrier is someone's mother, father, son, daughter, or family member. Someone is needing to see them when their shift is over. You can help. Please slow down and please put down your cell phones. National Work Zone Awareness Week runs until Friday, April 21st, but officials are asking drivers to continue safe practices even after the week has ended. In West Gardner, David Ledford, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. It's just so important to avoid any kind of distractions when you're behind the wheel. And today, the weather could have been a factor uh, as people took to the roads and as those roadways were pretty wet out there. And will that rain continue? We're going to take a first look at, our, look at our forecast and find out what's coming our way. All right, Peter, thank you. A bit colder out there today with those clouds and rain showers out there. Nothing really heavy, but overall uh, below average temperatures today and tomorrow and really much through the weekend as we have cooler temperatures on the way. Also on the way, some more rain showers. Not a lot, just a little. Uh, one wave came through earlier. We got a break for a while. Now there's more rain out there currently. And the back edge, though, is over here as this big upper level low kind of spins out of here tonight. This will end before midnight, and then tomorrow is going to be actually a pretty Pretty nice day around here. Our forecast for tonight, though, is cloudy skies, still some drizzle, a couple light rain showers out there, nothing heavy with low temperatures in the 30s. Your full forecast is coming up. Peter?
All right, Jeff, thank you. And coming up on ABC 7 News at 6, Smokey the Bear visits Augusta for a main wildfire awareness week. And our Matthew Jaroncic takes us down to Ellsworth for Down East Horizons annual autism awareness walkathon. Those stories and much more as ABC 7 News at 6 continues. Time to get to the Toyota Spring Sales Event for affordable 3.99% financing on an all-wheel drive RAV4. So come get your savings, then get out there. Toyota, let's go places. The lives we lead, the journey that defines us, the dedication, passion, and teamwork in everything we do, driven by the things we love. From the visions that lead us, the feelings that inspire us, to the roads that bring us together, Coastal Auto Parts, 29 locations in Maine, will get you to the moments that matter most. Get what you need to keep you firing on all cylinders when you sign up for Napa Rewards. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a Maine family that cares. Hey, it's Eric from Green Bear 420. We've been in business since 2010 and going strong, so stop in and check us out. We specialize in glass art by over 100 local artists and even have live glass blowing. Plus, we carry incense, novelties, t-shirts, and hard-to-find items. We have tons of local products for the tie-dye wearing person in your circle of friends. Come see us at 531 Moosehead Trail in Newport. And remember, Green Bear 420, it's not just a store, it's a lifestyle. At Living Innovations, we build community. You can be a part of it. We put supporting people first, and that builds a caring community within our workforce and for the people we serve. Living Innovation supports people with disabilities and has flexible work opportunities available. You could become a shared living provider and work from home or help support people to be active in the community. To learn more, visit livinginnovations.com and check out our employment and home provider opportunities. Become a part of Living Innovations and be part of a community with a purpose. Honey, where's the countertop? I sent it out to the granite shop this morning to be replaced. Wow, the quickest turnaround in the business, the granite shop in Sedgwick. Spring into savings and refresh your home at Ashley with up to 30% off designer picks where we have a selection of items created by our elite team just for you. Plus, special financing options for every budget, only at Ashley. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back. In light of Maine Wildfire Awareness Week, the Maine Forest Service hosted an event to engage the younger generation. Children lined up to meet Smokey the Bear after learning how to protect one of Maine's most valuable natural resources. Maine Forest Service also held a press conference discussing safety tips like ensuring a fire permit is obtained prior to burning, as well as how weather can play a role in the risk of fire spreading. Forest Ranger Chief Robbie Gross explained why fire danger is on the rise due to the change in seasons. From a springtime component, we are always anxious for a green up to occur. As the snow melts, water saturates into the ground, but there's a period of time where we have dry fuels on the surface. Our, our main source of wildfire spread is surface fuels. In the past five years, forest rangers have seen a 24% increase in wildfire spread. He urges everyone to call 911 if you see any signs of a fire. Down East Horizons held its annual Autism Awareness Walkathon this morning in downtown Ellsworth. Our Matthew Jaroncic was there and brings us a story. Downtown Ellsworth transformed into a sea of red as children and adults with autism took to the streets to share why they were walking. We could raise the awareness and, and so that everybody would see it. it. It's really a good feeling to know everybody is um, raising awareness and supporting it. Participants and their families started at Knowlton Park before making their way downtown to Main Street and looping back onto School Street. Walkers were enthusiastic the whole way, cheering and even receiving some friendly honks from drivers. Awesome fun, I like it. I have new friends here that I like a lot. 
proceeds from the event will help further educate staff members at Down East Horizons about the needs of people who are on the spectrum. It will also help fund activities for children in the organization. Early intervention makes a big difference in the lives of these folks. The, the younger you, you, you help somebody who has autism, the quicker you, those, those behaviors can be changed and they can sort of fit into society. Having two decades of healthcare experience, Down East Horizon staff member Teresa Andrews says she walks in this event to show why people with autism should be accepted and treated with respect. I have had the funnest times of my life with these people. And it's very important to me that they have good lives, that they're happy, they're healthy, um, and that they're treated well. Christopher Smith, who has autism, agrees. Um, everyone's different. Everyone's different in society. And it's important to recognize um, the ones who, who do have a disability and do everything we can to help them in society and help them um, help learn the same way as we do. In Ellsworth, Matthew Juroncic reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, such an important event there. Looks like there was a lot of fun had. Well, still to come on ABC7 News at 6, two centenarian World War II veterans are going down to New Orleans for a special occasion. Our Devin Dagnall brings us the details. And in sports, Maine football is in the final week of their spring practices before Saturday's spring game. Why their efforts have the team optimistic. That story coming right up. Did you know that an alpaca item is the most wish-listed gift idea? Stop searching for that perfect gift and start shopping for it at the Blue Alpaca in Belfast. It doesn't matter who's on your gift list, the Blue Alpaca has something for everyone with an incredible selection of alpaca socks, hats, sweaters, even stuffed animals and more. Shop in-store or online and take advantage of their free nationwide shipping. Too much to choose from? Don't worry, the Blue Alpaca also offers gift cards. The Blue Alpaca, feel the difference. A quality replacement window made with Fibrix material, which is twice as strong as vinyl, delivered through a stress-free process. Welcome to Renewal by Anderson. Get the peace of mind knowing Renewal by Anderson handles everything from start to finish. With one call, you'll enjoy working with the best people, exclusive products, and a superior process. It's the people. It's the process. It's the product. Call now to get our exceptional signature service. This fantastic offer is available only for a limited time. Renewal by Anderson, the better way to a better window. Living in Maine means long, cold winters and hot, humid summers. Whatever the weather, Bangor Heat Pumps is your solution. Open 24-7, Bangor Heat Pumps takes care of you at home or at work. We operate statewide and service all brands and models. Understanding moving can be stressful. We will help move any units you may have. We offer a veterans discount in our home with a capeless hero discount. Visit us online at BangorHeatPumpsLLC.com or call or text us at 307-7746. Bangor Heat Pumps. Hewitt Lift and Rolladock creates the strongest, simplest, and most reliable dock system. With one simple goal. To get you on the lake faster and easier than anyone else. Because at Hewitt, we build stronger. After 40 years of quality building, we get it. Hewitt Family builds for your family. For your family. For your family. Stand on the solid foundation of the Hewitt Family. Docks, pontoon legs, and boat lifts. You work hard, play harder. You deserve a Hewitt. There's no stopping a Mainer with a college education. If you feel left out, pick up the phone now and talk to someone from Maine's public universities, where every adult gets a student success coach who can tear down the barriers to a college education and put you on the path to a better paying job. Want to join us? Contact Maine's public universities today. Your success coach is waiting. Tonight Sports is brought to you by Ansley Moore, a realtor since 2013, working throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Welcome back in, everyone, and thank you for staying with us. We're going to start with some football. Up in Orono, the Black Bears are in their final week of spring ball, and looking ahead to Saturday's spring game, they seem to like what they're seeing. Ryan Sudol has the story. We've come together more, and you feel us have more of a consistent energy and, and passion for playing. UMaine football is fast approaching the end of their spring season. 
After a month of practices, things are looking up in black bear country. There are some growing pains, but you know, we've gotten, we've grown and we've gotten better every, every single practice and that's what we're going to continue to do. On the offensive side of the ball, there is plenty of internal competition and that has reaped great benefits for the core skill positions. You know, our receiver group, our running back group on offense, a lot of guys uh, competing for playing time there, and they're all of them are really gotten better throughout the spring. And even with a new offensive coordinator and Steve Cooper, don't expect a complete playbook overhaul. At the end of the day, football's football. You know, we're all getting to the same stuff, just dressing it up different. So, you know, it'll still be all the same things that we saw before. On defense, like how it ended last season, it started out a bit shaky, but it has picked up in the latter half. Just looking for us to continue to limit the big plays, and then we did that in our second scrimmage, so just want to take the next step. But the biggest thing that the Black Bears have improved on since their first practice in March is their sheer intensity. I mean, we want to be the most physical team in the country. To do that, you have to practice that way. Every day we're trying to take each other's heads off, just, you know, trying to build that depth, keep building a family, and just, you know, not being okay with being mediocre, not being okay with having a bad day or losing a rep. Now the team awaits Saturday's Jeff Cole Memorial Spring Game. And just because it's a fun day of inter-squad action, doesn't mean their fire will die down. Obviously, you know, we're excited for the spring game coming up this Saturday, but we're also fired up for every time we come out here. Just great energy, great vibes. We're just trying to compete, and, you know, obviously offense is trying to win the day, just like defense is. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens on Saturday. In Orono, I'm Ryan Sudall, ABC7, Fox 22 Sports. Thanks for that, Ryan. We'll see what happens on Saturday. Let's go to boys lacrosse now. Fresh off of their season opening win against Bangor last week, Brewer boys lacrosse looking to go 2-0 against Morse on Tuesday. Shipbuilders up in Bangor facing the Witches at Cameron Stadium. We're going to start late in the first quarter. Here is Ryder Goodwin for Brewer, knifing his way through the defense and ripping one into the net. Witches strike first, one to nothing. Just a minute later, his Bjorn Langford for Morse looking for a chance. He decides to take it himself, and it pays off. Shipbuilders tie it one to one after one. Here we go in the second. Aiden Davis with a nice spin off of the defense. He's going to sneak it in bottom shelf to give the Witches a two to one lead. They'd take a three to one lead at the half. But in the second, the shipbuilders would go off. Here is Langford again. Almost the same situation as before. Same result off the bounce. One of seven goals in the second half for Morse. They win 8 to 4. All right, that's all the time we have for sports. Here's Jeff Weller with your full five day forecast. Jeff. All right, Tyler, thank you. Your full weather is brought to you by the Blue Alpaca Ranch and Store. Visit our ranch and meet the alpacas or shop in our store in downtown Belfast. Let's start here, and it's with temperatures today. A bit colder, right? We'll take it with some sunshine back in the forecast tomorrow afternoon. Okay, the wind today again out of the south and west. Got a little squirrely for a few hours. We had wind gusts near 25 miles per hour. This will begin to pull back again tonight uh, with wind gusts near 10 miles per hour overnight. Time. But still, with that small crack advisory our favorite right uh, with wave heights out here approaching about six feet through early parts of tomorrow morning the big story today though of course was the rain showers out there nothing heavy but there were a couple rumbles of thunder and also some uh, reports of a half inch or so of rain uh, the bulk of that now is pushed out of our area we will see more rain showers tonight though ending before midnight and tomorrow will be a pretty nice day here comes that big upper level low it's fun to look at right there it is a spin in the atmosphere uh, but this is uh, moving this way slowly. It's going to push the last of the rain showers through here tonight, and then we're done with this thing and actually have a long, dry stretch of weather unfolding after this evening into the, probably the early parts of next week. Okay, going forward though, so if you want more rainfall, there's not going to be a lot to go around, but still a few hours of drizzle, some light rain showers out there as well before our next weather system gets in here. But notice the date here. This is next Tuesday. We have a long, dry stretch ahead. So after the rain showers tonight, we're done for several days before our next weather system gets in here after the weekend. All right, so our snowpack has receded <laughs> pretty much the entire viewing area now. Uh, still a little bit of snow across the far north overall. We're done with the snow for now, and a rain system is on the way, uh, of course, for today and then again for next week. So our forecast then for tonight, though, is the rain showers out there now are ending. Still some drizzle, nothing heavy at all. That's pretty much done. Look for low temperatures down near 38. 
under mostly cloudy skies after midnight with a light southwest breeze around five miles per hour for tomorrow. All right, so lots of clouds around tomorrow and a bit warmer than today with high temperatures reaching for 60. We'll probably stop just short with a west wind around five to 15. So overall, a pretty nice day tomorrow, albeit a bit cool this time of the year with those clouds around as well. And then looking ahead, your five day forecast shows tomorrow lots of clouds around, but then lots of sunshine around Thursday, a full day of sunshine Thursday with highs near 60. Friday, mostly cloudy. Okay, we'll take it. Highs are 60 as well. Here's the weekend. So mostly cloudy Saturday, and then maybe a slight chance for a couple showers on Sunday. A better chance for rain gets in here Monday night into Tuesday of next week. Peter. All right, looking pretty consistent there. Thank you, Jeff, and still more to come after the break. Stay with us. I got a call from some scammer who had the nerve to ask for my Medicare number. I was not born yesterday. <laughs> when someone asked for my Medicare number in a text, I knew it was a scam. Nice catch. And your mother knew it wasn't a real email. Go, Mom. I don't share my Medicare number with strangers. If you get a call, text, or email Strike. asking for your Medicare or personal information, delete. Shut it down. Nope. Learn more at Medicare.gov slash fraud. Like, yeah. The stylish Chevy Equinox RS like, uh, and Chevy Blazer RS. So you don't have to be an influencer to be an influencer. The, the RS family of Chevy SUVs, definitely worth a follow. Qualified lessees with a current eligible lease can lease this Equinox for $269 a month or get $1,500 cash allowance on all 2023 Equinox models. For the best boat deals this year, see your favorite brands in Belfast for Hamlin's Marine's Coastal Boat Sale. At Hamlin's Marine, we are powered by Yamaha Outboards, and we have more than 20 boat packages on display from Carolina Skiff, Janelle, Chris Craft, Scout, Sea Chaser, Eden Driver, and Weldcraft, including dinghies on display from Achilles and Puffin. Re-register at our website for a chance to win $1,000 worth of Heli Hansen apparel. Come see it all and more April 28th to the 30th at Hamlin's Marine's beautiful showroom on the Belfast waterfront. Mossy Ledge Spirits is a true hidden gem in Aetna. Located just three miles off I-95, exit 167, we are home to tastings, tours, cocktails, to-go drinks, bottles, live music, minis, and priceless memories. You're sure to fall in love with our handcrafted, unique, and deliciously clean-tasting spirits and feel right at home in our family-friendly environment. Mossy's Mobile Spirits is offering mobile bar service for weddings and large events. So enjoy some pizza and raise a glass here at Mossy Ledge Spirits. Big trucks rule the road. They're dangerous, and they can cause big, bad injuries. But the big trucking companies don't stand a chance against me. I'm Jim with Lowry & Associates. If you've been hurt by a big truck, call the twos. We win for you. Tonight, the Supreme Court gets set to take up the abortion pill. Plus, the new secrets emerging from the Pentagon leak investigation. More Americans turn to the most watched program on television, World News Tonight with David Muir. Welcome back. Two World War II main veterans are now headed to New Orleans to be honored by a well-known veterans organization. Devin Dagnall met with them for the, de for the departure of their trip. Where are you going today? The World War II Museum. I met tomorrow or whenever it is. And I have been a charter member of that ever since it was organized. Tuesday morning, 102 and a half year young World War II Navy veteran Edward E. Hendrickson and 100 year young World War II Coast Guard veteran Florence Smith flew out of the Bangor International Airport to visit the World War II Museum in New Orleans. At the museum, the pair and their comrades will take part in the Soaring Valor program through the Gary Sinise Foundation. What are you going to New Orleans for? <laughs> I don't know. I the trip was planned, and I didn't even know anything about this until a week or two ago. According to the Gary Sinise Foundation's website, veterans who attend the program will be treated to entertainment, celebratory meals, and community building with their fellow heroes. 
Despite not exactly knowing what trip he's going on, Hendrickson says he's excited to be going to New Orleans for the fourth time. So I'm just, I'm just anxious to see it again and see what the other fellas, uh, other veterans are doing. Knowing exactly where she's going, Smith says she's excited for the new experience. What are you looking forward to? Uh, well, just a trip because I've never ever been there. <laughs> According to Hendrickson's guardian, Joy Assunction, the pair will be among the first Maine veterans to experience soaring valor. In Bangor, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Just a great opportunity for both those Maine veterans. Hope they have an amazing time. All right, well, that's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you so much for all of us here at ABC7. Have a great night. We'll be right back here at 11 o'clock.